We're going to start with item six on the agenda, <clears throat> AB 552 with uh, Mr. Uh, Assemblymember O'Donnell. Please come forward. Good morning, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, may I begin? Yes, please. Oh, thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair and committee members. Uh, today I'm pleased to present AB 552, which seeks to control the cost of public works projects by requiring greater certainty in damages arising from a breach of contract. When a contract is breached in the, construct in the construction industry, it is, it is a common practice for one of the parties in that contract to seek damages from the breaching party. When these damages are accounted for in a public works contract up front, they are most commonly liquidated to a specific amount to provide certainty for all parties. Recently, several public agencies have begun using penalty clauses requiring consequential damages for breach of their public works contracts and not disclosing the amount of damages a contractor may be subject to. The uncertainty created by these undefined damages has led to situations wherein some projects cannot be underwritten by an insurance company due to the uncertain level of, of risk. Therefore, uh, construction does not begin. The projects do not get completed. AB 552 restores certainty to public contracts by requiring agencies to disclose damages up front when they choose to use consequential damages in a public works contract. And with me today uh, to testify is uh, Scott Governor for the Construction Employers Association, Mr. Chair. All right, Mr. Governor. Mr. Chair and members, Scott Governor, on behalf of the Construction Employers Association, um, liquidated damages are the norm in construction contracts. So you know that if you are late, you'll be set liable for a set amount per day. The addition of consequential damages, which are open-ended, basically it says the contractor shall be liable for amounts as determined by the owner are uninsurable. It's also counterproductive because what it does is it causes the contractor to raise the price at the front end for something that is very rare in public contracts as opposed to commercial contracts where, say, you build a target and you're late and you're liable for lost sales. Um, this is an uninsurable, about, uh, uh, uninsurable amount. And also to note, uh, this is if. So in fact, those entities listed in opposition, not a single one of them uses consequential damages in their contract provisions. So this bill has no actual impact on them. It is an anomaly. It's designed to keep costs down. And in fact, the standard practice is a mutual waiver of damages because consequential damages flow both ways. We think that's a, a better way um, to work. It saves money. And for those reasons, we ask for your support for this measure. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, any other witnesses Mr. in favor? Mr. Chair, members, Chris Walker on behalf of the California You're, Association. You are here support. in support. Very yes. good. Okay. The California Association of Sheet Metal Air Conditioning Contractors, for the reasons already stated, we support the bill. Very well. good. Thank you, sir. Any other witnesses uh, present in support? Uh, witnesses in opposition, please come forward. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members. Nancy Chaitis Espinosa with the California School Boards uh, Association. First, my thanks to the author and the sponsor for engaging us in conversation, uh, and we are continuing to, to work out our concerns. Um, I, I won't disagree with anything that the uh, speaker before me just said. Um, our concern is uh, with the proposed solution and unintended consequences that it may have in shifting risk to the project owners, which in our case is local educational agencies. So um, uh, we will continue to, to work with the author, but at this time, our our position is still opposed. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you for your testimony. Any other witnesses in opposition, please come forward. All right, uh, seeing none, comments, questions, concerns from the members? Uh, um, Senator Hill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If I could ask the uh, opposition, the one here, have you, the, the question was raised that you have used consequential damages or not used them in the past in the contracts? No, we would actually agree with the sponsor's characterization. It's it's not common to include these clauses in a contract, and the reason for that is because um, we, uh, as a project owner, can recover those costs whether or not we include that clause in the contract. So really the more responsible thing to do is to not include that clause in your contract. Um, one of our concerns is that uh, including those clauses and in concert with this proposed language, it may muddy the waters, it may cause some confusion. So uh, perhaps a, a, a judge could say, um, you as the owner were, uh, were, you were able to recover these consequential damages per statute or, or 
her uh, custom. But unfortunately, you have voluntarily capped yourself, so that might lead to some confusion, and that's something we would like to avoid. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any other questions from uh, uh, from the members? Yes, uh, Senator Gaines. If I could have, uh, Scott Governor. And I wonder if you could, um, could you just give an example of, of of how of this of this legislation what it would do in the event of a contract and how it would engage a contractor um, under the bill there's no impact at all if the agency doesn't have the provision in there it's still a matter of tort law which is the historical practice for consequential damages is in tort if an agency elected to use one, and I certainly agree with the school boards, it's not a good decision to include this provision, then they would have to put a set amount, just like they do with liquidated damages. So okay. it's 10000 a day, 5000 50000 a okay, day. Okay, but you, you spoke about um, an insurable event. Correct. The, can, um, can you expound on that? Sure. So the way? surety industry, and we provided I'm sorry, letters to the committee, has um, when agencies have included these provisions, the surety industries have written to these agencies saying, because this is an open-ended amount, we will not provide a bond. Okay. So that leaves all the risk back on the contractor. Um, it's from the <coughs> surety association, individual sureties. It's been consistent. They cannot insure open-ended risk. Okay. So, so that this makes it insurable, which uh, if if they put bondable. a set amount, it is bondable. That is bondable. correct. Okay. Very well. Thank you. All right, before we uh, move any further, I'd like to establish a quorum and also welcome uh, Senators Glazer and Runner to the GO Committee. Welcome. We're happy to have you. Welcome. We need another rose uh, amongst these mean men. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, <laughs> so, welcome. Um, and uh, we'll establish a quorum. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Hall. Present. Hall present. Barry Hill. Here. Barry Hill present. Block. Here. Block present. Here. Gaines. Gaines present. Galgiani. Glazer. Here. Glazer present. Hernandez. Hill. Here. Hill present. Weso. Lara. McGuire. Runner. Here. Runner present. Vidak. All right. Uh, quorum has been established. Mm -hmm. uh, any other uh, comments, uh, sir? Um, uh, Mr. O'Donnell, any other closing comments you'd like to, to make? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Respectfully ask for an aye vote. All right. Is there a motion? This is recommend to pass. Uh, Senator Hill moves. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Motion is do pass and re-refer to the Judiciary Committee. Hall? Yes. Hall, aye. Barry Hill? Aye. Barry Hill, aye. Block? Aye. Block, aye. Gaines? Aye. Gaines, aye. Galgiani? Glazer? Aye. Glazer, aye. Hernandez? Hill? Aye. Hill, aye. Weso? Laura? McGuire? Aye. McGuire, aye. Runner? Aye. Runner, aye. It's eight. Six. Okay, you have eight. That's enough to get out, but we'll keep the roll open for the absent members. Thank you. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. All right. Okay, Mr. Le Sen Assembly Member uh, Levine is not here, so we'll move to uh, Assembly Member Stone. And that's item four, AB 394. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. AB 394 is a bill about wine labeling, and we were not quite sure if we were on consent or not, but I'm happy to present it. And No, you're not on consent. Could vote. Okay. There seemed to be an indication there, but thank you. But Senator Hill says it should be. Well, in Napa, Sonoma. I just want to see your pretty face. Pastor Robles, you just wanted to see my tie. I did. That's, that's true. It was. Yeah. <laughs> There are wine labeling standards in California that ensure that a wine that is labeled from a region comes from that region. And this is adding Monterey to the list of Napa, Sonoma, Paso Robles, and, and others throughout California. Monterey is a noted region for wine, its own uh, appellation, I believe, and respectfully request your support. Very good. You have witnesses to testify in favor? I do. Go ahead. Well, thank you. Hi. I'm Kim Stemmler. I'm here on behalf of the Monterey County Vintners and Growers. I'm the director of the Regional Association. And we're delighted that you're hearing this um, legislation. We're delighted that Assemblymember Stone agreed with us and sees that this is really an important economic 
piece of uh, legislation, especially because world wine worldwide is so popular, and there are other regions growing a lot of wine. China is now the fifth largest grower of wine. So the more we can have all of our regions recognized as premier growing regions and have that in every bottle uh, that goes on a label in South Dakota, in Germany, all across the world, the better we'll do. So we appreciate you listening to this and hope you pass it. Thank you. We're good. Margo Parks, on behalf of the Family Winemakers of California, um, members of the committee, we'd like to agree with the assembly member and the speaker previously. Um, we believe this is an important bill because it helps um, bring brand identity not only to the wineries but to the region. Um, so we are very much in support and ask your I vote. Very good. Any other witnesses in support? Please come forward. Witnesses in opposition? Please come forward. Uh, comments, concerns, questions from the members? Yeah, I have just yes. got one. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm a big consumer of your product, and I think this, <laughs> Thank you. I think this is a very <laughs> good bill. I would like to move it at the appropriate time. All right, very good. Noted. Uh, I'm glad you did your research before <laughs> voting on this bill and check out some Monterey County wines. A lot last night. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Any other uh, comments, concerns from the members? Uh, I will. Mr. Stone, would you like to close? Respectfully request your I vote. All right. It's been properly moved by uh, Senator Barry Hill. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Motion is due pass and re-refer to the Appropriations Committee. Hall? Aye. Hall, aye. Barry Hill? Aye. Barry Hill, aye. Block? Aye. Block, aye. Gaines? Aye. Gaines, aye. Galgiani? Glazer? Aye. Glazer, aye. Hernandez? Hill? Aye. Hill, aye. Weso? Lara? McGuire? Aye. McGuire, aye. Runner? Aye. Runner, aye. Vidak. Okay, that, that has eight votes. We'll keep it open for absent members. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Very good. Senator. Thank you. All right. Uh, I do, Mr. Levine is here. Assembly member, you're up next. Uh, what is nine. It? Uh, item 9, AB 774. Good morning. Good morning Thank sir. you, Mr. Chair and members. Um, AB 774 allows for limited... Uh, craft beer tasting at farmers markets and uh, grants nonprofits the ability to receive donated, donated beer items for auction. Uh, currently, ABC allows the sale of sealed beer containers at certified farmers markets. Unfortunately, unlike other products at the market, they're not able to allow uh, consumers to taste them. By allowing tastings, AB 774 would greatly help local brewers educate consumers and build relationships uh, with those brands at local farmers markets. Additionally, the bill corrects laws affecting the sales of beer at nonprofit fundraising events. Um, currently, with wine, nonprofits are able to accept wine to then be auctioned at uh, nonprofit events. Uh, this isn't the case for beer. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Very good. Uh, any witness? You, yes. Sir, Mr. Chair, members, uh, Chris Walker on behalf of the California Craft Brewers Association, representing 350 craft breweries across the state. Uh, we support the bill. Um, this is a privilege that uh, wine has already at farm, farmers markets. We'd like to be able to taste our products as well in a controlled environment. Uh, the nonprofit issue, uh, as beer has become more and more popular, we're at, our breweries are asked for donations that can be auctioned off. Um, we cannot do that because the nonprofits do not have legal status to, to provide uh, sales for off-site consumption, and this bill would remedy that. So we look for your support. Thank you. Very good. Any other witnesses in support? Please come forward. Opposition, please come forward. Yes, please come forward, sir. Sorry for the tight yeah, that's space right. we have here, sir. Intimate. Yeah, very intimate. Uh, Reverend James Butler from the uh, California Council on Alcohol Problems. Uh, Chairman Hall, members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to uh, voice our opposition to AB 774. This is a further intrusion of alcohol into what has developed and even sometimes been promoted as family-friendly events, and that's farmers' markets, where Saturday morning people take their families down and walk around the produce. And this is an intrusion into that with, again, consumption of alcohol. Also, there's an addition of community events within this that is problematic, as how is that going to be clearly defined and delineated that it's always going to be associated with the farmer's market in as much as the definition referenced in the bill uh, means it's any um, public or civil event, civic event, which is probably not the intent, but would certainly uh, could be, have that understanding. 
The question we have is, are, are there any public venues still in California where we might acknowledge that it's inappropriate to serve alcohol? Uh, currently, legislation is being considered on a number of things, and I know that those are not before you today, but they include a number of venues that heretofore have not had alcohol and is being considered. <coughs> those supporting AB 774 uh, present the argument that this will be a benefit to the craft brew industry as it will help them sell more of their product, and we heard that again today. However, I contend that it is not the legislature's responsibility to assist the alcohol in selling their product. For all the benefits that have been provided to the alcohol industry over the last 10, 12, 15 years, there has not been corresponding action to address the harm caused by their product and hold them financially accountable. In California, as you probably know, the taxes on alcohol have not been raised since 1991 nearly 25 years. How long will we subsidize the alcohol industry with a low and outdated tax rate, while at the same time continuing to approve benefits to the marketing, sales, and manufacturing of their product? It's time to simply say no. Enough is enough, and we can begin that statement today by voting no on AB 774. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Reverend, for your testimony. Uh, any other witnesses in opposition, please come forward. Uh, seeing none, uh, any questions, comments, concerns from the members? Yes, uh, Senator Gaines. I wonder if um, could you provide some clarification on a certified farmer's market, that, that definition? Sure. What, do what, what is, I, I mean, when I go to a farmer's market, I don't know if they're certified or not. I'm just trying to get right. clarity. This, so certified farmer's market is provided for in statute. The products sold at certified farmer's market areas have to be grown on property owned by the actual farmer. Um, and so products that are in that area, you know are grown by the vendor on property they own. The area that you see when you go to a farmer's market where there's coffee and bread and bagels and things like that, obviously those were not grown on property. So those are in a community event area that is operated in a conjunction and adjacent to mm -hmm. the certified farmer's market okay. area. Beer is not always going to have all the ingredients grown, so we authorize in this bill that they be placed in the, com in the community event area. Okay, great. So Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Senator McGuire. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair, uh, and do appreciate the author bringing this forward. Uh, and I think the other, there's two areas of regulation that this bill is focusing on as well. So certified is already under the discretion of California Department of Food and Ag and have to be able to comply with state rules and regulations on the California Department of Food and Ag side. And I think the other piece is this does not force a farmer's market to sell craft brew. Uh, it allows them the option with significant regulation as already uh, dictated within the alcohol beverage control law. Um, and we have to remember that these uh, vendors would also be subject to the uh, oversight of the local farmer's market management and their board uh, along with ABC. So I think there are significant rules and regulations and checks and balances in place to ensure responsible uh, drinking. And I think that if you look at the crowd that goes to a farmer's market, at least in many areas, um, they're gonna, they're there just as much for artichokes as they are for a craft brew. Thank you. Um, how many, I'm sorry, any other comments, <clears throat> questions, concerns from the members? How many um, um, participants do you think will actually use this as as a normal in a normal course of a venue? It, it's um, as far as the farmers market presence of craft breweries. Uh, they were authorized last year, beginning January one of this year, to attend. We've already had forty different breweries apply for the permit to attend certified farmers markets. Um, it is a great way for a small brewery in an in a area to get out to their community and expose them to their products. And uh, it's being utilized by typically smaller craft brewers. And can you talk about the management of this, how it will be managed? Yeah, uh, for, we have to apply for a permit with the ABC. Um, they authorize the permit based upon the premise, the location. Uh, we have to cordon off the area uh, with a physical separation so that uh, people cannot come and go as they please. Um, it's overseen by the operator of the 
farmer's market at, completely at their discretion if they want to have um, craft brewers there, if they want to have craft brewers tasting their beer. Um, it's completely at their discretion. Um, it's also the case that no more than one is allowed to participate and eat at any given time uh, at a farmer's market. So you're not going to have a, a free-for-all, if you will, where you have multiple craft brewers lined up uh, and you turn a farmer's market into a beer festival. That's not, that's not going to happen. Like that. right. And you, you may recall, uh, Mr. Chair, last year we passed legislation to allow farmer's market wine tasting. Yes. And this is modeled right off of that. Right. Mr. Chair, if I just yes. could, thank you. You know, the Reverend made a very good point, and, uh, and that was that, you know, we do seem to, <coughs> for good reason, uh, add opportunities for alcoholic beverage consumption at different areas. And it's too bad that it's incremental. Uh, it would have been nice. There's one, one package, and there could have been an opportunity to raise those those alcohol taxes in, in that. So, that, I mean, that's just an unfortunate circumstance, but I, I'll certainly support the bill. But it's, it's Yeah, and, and I think you're right, Senator Heal, but I also want to err on the side of caution, too. You know, instead of just doing one bill where you're adding three different type of components, it's good to just do it sometimes incrementally uh, to see exactly how, if it's working or not or if we need to pull back on it. And so uh, while it is a good idea, I think if you're erring on the side of caution, maybe incrementally can sometimes be good as well. And, and you're right, Mr. Because the, the issue <coughs> comes about incrementally. I mean, the right. need and those right. things, it doesn't happen at one time. Right. So, yeah, thank it's, you. Uh, it's a really good point. I, I was at the farmer's market with my son and um, daughter and wife just a couple of weeks ago in San Rafael, the Civic Center. It's a large farmer's market. Right next door to where we were eating falafel was uh, a farm that was also doing wine tasting for, for wine that they, they uh, make. And you could hardly even tell that they were doing it. It caught my eye because I'm looking for that type of right, thing. Right. But it wasn't drawing a, a crowd any larger than any other booth at the farmer's market. And uh, I certainly felt like it was a positive thing, and I felt very proud of the work that we did in the legislature on that. I don't see this as a hindering uh, uh, a family experience uh, at a farmer's market. Uh, if, if, if anything, I think it enhances it. Uh, it is managed. Uh, you're not going to have, it's not going to turn into a local bar. Uh, at the farmers markets, I think it's controlled, um, and I think if we, as long as we keep uh, Senator Barry Hill away from there, I think you know we keep things moving. But uh, might be good for the dance. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, uh, having having this might encourage the father to be there or the mom. <laughs> so uh, I think Mr. Barry Hill is moving the bill, and uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Motion is due pass and re referred to the Appropriations Committee. Hall? Aye. Hall, aye. Barry Hill? Aye. Barry Hill, aye. Block? Aye. Block, aye. Gaines? Aye. Gaines, aye. Galgiani? Glazer? Aye. Glazer, aye. Hernandez? Hill? Aye. Hill, aye. Weso? Lara? McGuire? Aye. McGuire, aye. Runner? Aye. Runner, aye. Okay, that has eight, enough to get it out, but we'll keep it open for the absent members. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and Senators. Thank you, sir. All right, we see Assemblywoman Gaines, item one. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. And that's AB 166. And, and Assemblywoman, this is a do pass recommendation. Right here. Yes. So Good close. morning. I know Good you're up morning. close. Yes. <laughs> oh, I don't think I even need my glasses. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. My Good pleasure. morning, members. Good morning. AB 166 addresses the governor's veto from last year by permitting rather than compelling the Department of General Services with the consent of the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation to enter into a long-term lease with a non-specified nonprofit for a proposed museum site on vacant land at Folsom State Prison. The site does not conflict with any CDCR operational or facility plans at either Old Folsom Prison or new Folsom Prison and would be built and operated with private donations. The 30,000 square foot site would be used to replace the aging existing museum located within the prison walls. The new contemporary facility will be located outside the prison walls and therefore uh, more accessible to visitors. The museum will meet all building and safety codes and can serve as a broader community asset than the current museum. The museum would be operated by volunteers, many of which would be former CDCR correctional officers. <laughs> 
This bill received unanimous support in the Assembly. I respectfully request your aye vote on this bill. And with me here today to testify are Joel Valencia, President of the Old Guard Foundation, and Bob Sleppy. They are here to answer any technical questions about the museum and about the foundation. Very good. Thank you, uh, member. Um, are there any witnesses to testify in favor of the bill? Yes, thank you. you, you oh, I'm sorry. Read? I thought you were here sure. to answer technical oh. questions, but go ahead. Um, I'm a retired correctional lieutenant from Folsom Prison. I volunteer at the current museum, which is approximately 900 square feet. Um, we have visitors from all 50 states and the last three years visitors from 44 countries. So our primary goal is to educate the public in the past and the present and the future of, uh, the, of corrections. All right. Any other witnesses in support? Any witnesses in opposition? Uh, comments, questions, concerns from the members? Yeah, I, I got a question, Mr. Chairman. Yes. That museum's inside the walls? Actually, no, sir. It's on the property, the prison property just outside the wall. The stone oh, gate. Oh, okay. There, it's it's, it's accessible, accessible, but not not easily. It's inside accessible. the entrance gate. All right, so, and so people come in and, and see the history of Folsom Prison and prisons like it? or Correct, but the addition to this will be not only Folsom Prison, we want it to be a national museum, so we'll have artifacts from uh, institutions all over the United States, and we've even had support from other countries to have artifacts from their institutions. And there are some incredible artifacts in there. You have an old searchlight and old... Uh, Gatling guns and weapons that inmates make. There's a lot of things we want to focus on, though, are the positive things in corrections, like prison industry authority. A lot of the public doesn't know that all the license plates in California are made at Folsom Prison, and all the products that prison industries makes, uh, thereby reducing recidivism. So we want to really educate the public on those positive. Yeah, a couple of years ago, we, we toured that facility, but we didn't get, yeah. didn't go through the museum, which would have been, I think, interesting. There's, all, there's a lot to see, but it's in just a small little tiny warehouse. I mean, it's just, it's not something that would attract you. I think we'll get a lot of coverage there. The Great. building that it's in now is actually the oldest building on prison property. The prison was opened in 1880, and this building was built in approximately 1870. Wow. Great. Okay, thank it's you. It's a unique opportunity for our community. Move the bill. Mr. Gaines. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> I, um, I just want, I did want to speak to this, um, this issue in terms of the, um, the opportunity because Johnny Cash, uh, you know, he performed at Folsom Prison and, and that is a worldwide attraction. Mm -hmm. the, the fact that Johnny Cash performed at that prison, people come from all over the world to see the prison, mm -hmm. to go to the museum. And I think there's a huge opportunity to deliver uh, a positive message uh, through uh, a new, <laughs> uh, larger museum that would be funded by a nonprofit. So, um, I think it's a great idea, and it's already it's already received its uh, motion of support that I support it too. Thank you. It's just so I'm me being in law enforcement. You know, we try to run out of those things, and it's just so amazing <laughs> that people we're trying to run to them. <laughs> I'm just tickled pink over that. <laughs> Okay. Real, real quick question. Doctor, yes. So, a uh, question to uh, Senator Gaines. What happens at home if you don't support her bill? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah, so I'm just curious, is there consequences? He'll be, he'll be moving into prison. <laughs> All right. Any other uh, comments, questions, concerns from the members, I believe? Uh, who moved the bill? Senator Gaggi. Oh, of course. Senator Galgiani moves. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Motion is due pass and re-refer to the Appropriations Committee. Hall? Aye. Hall, aye. Berryhill? Aye. Berryhill, aye. Block? Aye. Block, aye. Gaines? Aye. Gaines, aye. Galgiani? Aye. Galgiani, aye. Glazer? Aye. Glazer, aye. Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez, aye. Hill? Aye. Hill, aye. Hueso? Lara? McGuire? Aye. McGuire, aye. Runner? Aye. Runner, aye. Attendance. Ten. Ten. Are you aye on this? Request? Yes. Aye. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. Laura, aye. Welcome, Senator. Thank you. Eleven zero. All right. We have Thank eleven you. on that. We have Great. Uh, we do. We have some right All right. 
we have 11, so we'll, it's, it's enough to get out, but we'll keep the roll open. Thank you, Thank you so much. All right. Much. Our Thank final, you. are we going to take up the consent calendar now? <coughs> we can. Let's take up the consent calendar. It. It's been moved by Senator Hill. Uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Hall? Hall I. Hall I. Berry Hill? Aye. Berry Hill I. Block? Aye. Block I. Gaines? Aye. Gaines I. Galgiani? Aye. Galgiani I. Glazer? Aye. Glazer I. Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez I. Hill? Aye. Hill I. Weso? Laura? Aye. Laura I. McGuire? Aye. McGuire I. Runner? Aye. Runner I. Vidak? All right. Um, 11. That's enough to get out. And we have some. And Assemblywoman Waldron, my good friend, is present. Uh, item 3, AB 362. And this enjoys a due pass recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Indeed. I'm here today to present Assembly Bill 362, which would create a pilot project for printing by the Department of General Services in the Office of State Printing. Existing law requires that all state printing be done in the Office of State Printing. This pilot project would help state printing jobs skip the chemical processing step that requires more energy, water, and causes more waste. Process-free plates utilized by the Office of State Printing would demonstrate environmental and economic benefits reducing the overall carbon footprint of traditional printing. I own a printing business, actually a screen printing business. We're talking about offset printing on paper, but the sim similar process is used in my business, and I can tell you the, the way it's done has been done for ages. It hasn't come to the modern age, and there's a lot of waste of water, there's a lot of rinsing of chemicals, hazardous waste disposal, and things like that, which would be eliminated by using process-free plates, and that's why it's re I was really excited to be able to carry this bill. This bill clearly demonstrates how what is good for the environment can also be good for business because it's cost effective. Here I have with me Tom Sheehy and Miss Stacy Stem Albert, who is representing Kodak, and I urge your support. Thank Very you. good, thank you, uh, member, for uh, bringing this bill forward. Uh, please. Hello, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chair, and the members of the committee. My name is Stacy Stern Albert. I'm with Kodak, and I'm here to ask for your support for this bill. Kodak is a leader in the commercial printing industry, and we invest heavily in making printing more sustainable. Um, Process-free printing plates have the ability to dramatically reduce the amount of water, chemistry, and energy used in offset printing, as Assemblywoman Waldron described. Um, there are over 2,500 printers in the state of California, and this bill I'm not this bill, this technology, if widely adopted, has the potential to save over 25 million gallons of water. So we hope the state will take a leadership role in demonstrating how well this technology can work and um, therefore um, lead the rest of the private sector to look to this technology. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tom Sheehy, respectfully asking for your I vote this morning. Very good. Thank you. Uh, any other witnesses in support? Uh, any witnesses in opposition, please come forward. Uh, questions, comments, concerns from the members? It's been moved by Senator Lara. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Motion is due pass and re-refer to the Appropriations Committee. Hall? Aye. Hall I. Berry Hill? Aye. Berry Hill I. Block? Aye. Block I. Gaines? Aye. Gaines I. Galgiani? Aye. Galgiani I. Glazer? Aye. Glazer I. Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez I. Hill? Aye. Hill I. Weso? Lara? Aye. Lara I. McGuire? Aye. McGuire I. Runner? Runner, I. All right, congratulations, Bill's out. We're going to keep the roll open for absent members. Thank you, Thank you. Very much. It's good Thank to you. see you. Good to see you. All right, so we're going to add on to, we're going to go back to allow the members to add on. What bill are we one taking? already has 11 to 0, and we don't have our other two members in yet. Okay, so, so we'll just go to the ones who do, do. Okay. Uh, is, I think he has to add on, right? Uh, Where are you? Have you been here since the beginning? Okay. Yeah, I think he's been here. So we'll go through item four. Okay, we'll move, uh, we'll start with item four. AB 394, uh, Mark Stone. Current vote is eight to zero on item four. Absent members, Galgiani. Galgiani, I. Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez, I. Weso. Laura. Aye. Laura, I. It's 11 to zero. Okay, that's 11. Item six currently has eight votes. The absent members are Galgiani. Galgiani, I. Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez, I. Weso. Laura. Aye. Laura, I. Vidak. That's 11 to 0. Okay. 
item number nine, AB 774. Current vote is eight to zero. Absent members, Galgiani. Aye. Galgiani, aye. Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez, aye. Hueso. Laura. Aye. Laura, aye. Vidak. That's 11 to zero. And that's all we have. And that's it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, members. So we'll wait the, I think they're coming from natural resources. Okay. We'll wait moment, about so. five minutes for the absent members to. We're going to lift the bills for you, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. I wish I could be like you one day. <laughs> <laughs> Item number one, AB 166. The current vote is 11 to 0. Absent members, Weso, Vidak. Aye. Vidak, aye. That is currently 12 to 0. Item two represents our consent calendar. The vote is currently 11 to 0. Absent members, Weso, Vidak. Aye. Vidak, aye. That's 12 to 0. Item 3, AB 362, current vote is 11 to 0. Absent members, Weso, Vidak. Aye. Vidak, aye. That's 12 to 0. Item 4, AB 394, the current vote is 11 to 0. Absent members, Weso, Vidak. Aye. Vidak, aye. That's now 12 to 0. Item 6, AB 552, current vote is 11 to 0. Absent members, Weso, Vidak. Aye. Vidak, aye. That's... 12 to 0. And then item number 9, AB 774. Current vote is 11 to 0. Absent members, Weso, Vidak. Aye. Vidak, aye. That's 12 to 0. All right, you're good to go. Thank you, Senator. You want to hack my community? <laughs> <laughs> Item number one, AB 166, the current vote is 12 to 0. Absent Mr. member. Can I have a seat? Yeah, please have a seat. Can you have a seat for me? Well, welcome to the committee. I don't feel welcome today. <laughs> Every, everybody left. They were saddened of your uh, That's okay. absence. So this is item number one. It's currently 12 to 0. Absent member Wayso. Aye. Wayso, aye. That is 13 to 0. Item number two represents the consent calendar. Current vote is 12 to 0. Absent member Wayso? Aye. Wayso, aye. That passes 12 to 0. Item number three, AB 362. Current vote is 12 to 0. Absent member Wayso? Aye. Wayso, aye. That passes 13 to 0. Item four, AB 394. Current vote is 12 to 0. Absent member Wayso? Aye. Wayso, aye. That passes 13 to 0. Item number six, AB 552, the current vote is 12 to 0. Absent member Weso? Uh. Weso, aye. <laughs> That's 13 to 0. And item number nine, AB 774, the current vote is 12 to 0. Absent member Weso? Uh. Weso, aye. That passes 13 to 0. <laughs> it is very, very efficient, sir. <laughs> Thank you. How was your committee over there? That's it. Uh, Geo stands adjourned. <laughs>